All right, people, I'm back again. So, what are you learning? If you don't change from your evil ways, you're going to be given to it. And once you are given to it, there's only one place you're going to go. You're not going to heaven. You're not. The Lord said he ain't changed. You just read, I just read from uh, Genesis when the Lord told Cain, you have power over sin. So you got power either to give in to sin or to subdue it, to overcome it. And you got it through Jesus Christ. Jesus overcame sin, so we don't have to he showed you that it's possible. He came in human form. He showed you that it's possible. Now, we're not perfect as Jesus, but he we reach towards perfection. And God sees that. He said you will be judged according to your works, your words, your heart. All these things you will be judged on. You will be judged by. You see, we live in a world where people, in order to keep the congregation there, what they do? God died for your sin. You are good. And they leave it at that. You tell a baby the basics. That's what they're going to go off of. That's what they're going to go off of. Let's say your kids keep acting up in school. And you continue to reward them. No matter what they do, you think they're going to want to change. Why? Why change? But how the devil works is, he rewards you for your sin. Now you think it's God. And it's actually the devil. He started giving his people gifts for disobeying God. What did I say sorcerers and witches do? They get power from the spirits. Not the Holy Spirit now. Get power from demons. From their ancestors, I guess. Use necromancy. So you think you can be a child of God and hold a seance to talk to your dead loved ones. But I love God. Let the dead sleep. How about that? If you love God, you'll let the dead sleep. I wanted to tell them something before they passed away. You should have told them. Too late now. Because I'm going to tell you about one thing about doing darkness. Just like doing good, it spreads. If you keep living an evil life, you're going to start doing more and more evil. Take an adulterous wife or husband. They cheat one time. They conscious messing with them. God is working on them. Then they go do it again. Eventually, they're going to stop hearing the voice of God. They're going to keep doing that sin nature. And then they're going to die of what? Adultery. Oh, for real, you got to stop. If the wages of sin are death, you got to think about the second death. The spiritual death. The death with your body. And the thing is, when, when the people go to hell, they don't get a new body. You probably had the same old tormented body. You don't even get a new, you don't become a new, you know why you don't become a new creation? Because you don't try, you didn't try to be a new creation here. You didn't try to become a new. You've made no changes. Until somebody die in the family, then you want to talk about all this good stuff. You go to a funeral, now you want to be like, you know, we got to do this. And then you go back to doing what you've been doing. Clubbing and partying. I was breezing through my news feed. I didn't hear so many people talk about God. Then you'll see women twerking in the middle of the street. I love God. Huh? I don't think so. I don't think twerking 
It's what the doctor ordered for your body. That's lustful. You causing men to lust. He said, if you cause your brother to sin, that's sin. They say you're walking around with your titties out. <laughs> I'm good. You causing your brother to sin. Because guess what men do when we see titties? We look. Now I see if you got them covered up, but if you got them out, you causing somebody else to sin. I was riding down Spring Hill Avenue a week ago, last Friday. And a woman was walking around with a bathing suit on with high heels. And me as a man, I'm like, oh Lord, what the world? She got a bathing suit on. <laughs> Leave nothing to the imagination. And our imagination goes straight to the dark side. And then I got to pray. Lord Jesus, forgive me for that, Lord Jesus. That's how you have power over sin. Now let's say if I'll be like, oh, when is sin produced? When you are drawn away and enticed by your own lust, the lust that dwells in you, you go towards it instead of run away from it. The Lord said, for every temptation, there is a way out. When you draw towards your lust, whether it be witchcraft, whether it be sorcery, whether it be lying, when you give into it, you gave sin the power over you. But when you flee from it, I know everybody like you rich the devil, he'll flee from you. Sometimes the devil in you. You gotta flee from yourself. Oh shit. Like it's something that happened before every marriage. A bachelor party. When you pay for strippers. Right before you get married. And you do all kind of evil things. That makes no sense. I don't know who started that, but it makes no sense. I've been married twice and never had a bachelor party either time. But I know in my heart it's wrong. And I know according to the Bible, it's wrong. Once you know something is wrong according to the word of God, you pray in it. But if you accept it as being right and normal, you're not going to pray it away. You're going to keep doing it. You're going to start thinking it's okay. And you're going to make no changes. Oh, it's okay. Take homosexuals. You watch the videos all the time. Or lesbians. They push their beliefs on their kids coercing them to live their lifestyle. Suffer not the little children to come to me. What are you doing when you're embracing this ideology and encouraging your kids to live a life that's not pleasing to the Lord? What are you doing? I'm asking you a question. What are you doing? You're misleading them. You are held accountable for that. Now what has to happen? Those kids are going to have to grow up and become adults, young adults, and change too. It's your problem. It's your fault. They got there the way they are. Now they got to fight against it. They got to change their whole way of thinking because you put it in their head that it's okay. And if they don't change, they're going to go to hell too. If I don't change, I'm going to hell too. I accept that. That's why I do my best to change. That's why I do my best to live a life pleasing to the Lord. That's why a lot of times I turn down invites. It was fun when I lived in it. But he said, when I was a child, I behaved as a child. But when I became a man, I did away with childish things. Clubbing and partying and excess of wine, of drinking, riotous living. That's something you do away with as you get older, as you become an adult. Humble yourself for the Lord and he will lift you up. So what happens when you don't humble yourself? You get lifted down. 
or lower it down. You get lower it down. Low, how low can you go? How low can you go? Hell, how low can you go? Hell, that's the lowest you can go. And then you're going to be there. You're going to be given over to the will of your enemies. A dude said he had a vision. A co-worker was telling me this. A guy said he had a vision. He had a vision of hell. And all the people that made songs that are unpleasing to the Lord, that are dead, they listen to that music all the way and demons <laughs> were ruling over them. They were playing their music for demons. It's kind of scary, ain't it? And I think God gives people these visions not actually saying they went to hell, but it's showing you the possibilities of what hell would be like. And there's many people trying to warn you to steer clear of hell. God said, I will give you your heaven here on earth. But you got to think about it. What's heaven on earth? Just think about what's heaven on earth. For you to actually live heaven on this, in this evil world. You got to live a life pleasing to the Lord. That's the only way you're going to see heaven here. That's the only way you're going to see heaven in time to come. But you have to make changes. I do. That's why I want to live a long life. If the Lord wills it. Why? Because I will be cleansed from all my evil ways. Next year, I want to be a different person than I was this year. And then the year after that, if I'm killed, still living, if God extended my life a little bit more, I want to do better that year too. He said, an evil man will not live out half their days. You know why a lot of people don't die young? Because they're evil. And you know why some people die young? Because they are good. They have fulfilled their purpose. Take Abel. He didn't die in sin. He died right after receiving compliments and good news from God. He was accepted. So when his brother killed him, it didn't hurt Cain. I mean, it didn't hurt Abel. It hurt Cain. Cain, I mean, Abel did not die in sin. Abel died being accepted by the Lord. And basically he was telling Cain, your heart ain't right. But if you keep doing good, I will get you good. If you keep doing righteousness, I will get you righteous. But if you keep doing evil, now listen to what I'm saying. If you keep doing evil, I will get you evil. When I say get, I mean, I'm going to take you when you're evil. If you keep doing righteousness, I'm going to take you in your righteousness. And the thing is, tomorrow's not promised to us. So why should we continue living in sin and make no changes just on the thing, just on the saying that Jesus Christ died for your sins? Jesus does not like sin. Well, Jesus told, Jesus saved the woman that is about to be stoned. But what did he tell her? The woman caught in the act of adultery. What did he tell her? I think y'all know. Go your way and sin no more. What did he say? Stop being a whore. She knew what her sin was. She was caught in the act of it. And she was worthy of stoning. The Lord came in and saved her. But he saved her and said, don't sin no more. He told one guy, go your way and sin no more unless a worse thing come upon you. Worse than what I delivered you from. A lot of y'all, worse things are going to come upon you because you're not stopping. Do you understand? Does it make sense to you at all? Is it clicking in your brain that you can't continue in sin and call yourself a Christian? And call yourself a follower of the Most High God by continued life in sin. It does not work that way. It never will work that way. I don't care who you are. 
I don't care if you own four churches. I don't care if you the deacon. I care if you're the accountant of the church. If you're still living in sin, it's bad, son. It's bad. So people remember that. Make changes. And the thing is, David saw this in some of his people. They're going into the house of the Lord, and yet they ain't making no changes. And he see it. Have a blessed day.